Praise God and welcome to Perfecting Bible Class. It is always a privilege to teach the Word of God. We have just concluded the book of Colossians and before we go into another book or another study, uh, I just want to deal with you for the next couple of weeks um, on why it is very important for us to have a love and a desire for the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, it is the entrance of thy Word that bringeth light and life, and we pray that the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ would shine bright as always. May the people be blessed by thee and never impressed by me. Call through the revelation of thy Word these thy people to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and to follow you more nearly. And now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And every glad heart said amen. We praise God for his word. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me the words that will bring new life. Words on the wings of the morning. My dark nights will fade away if you speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Message of love to encourage me. Lifting my heart from despair. How you love, how you care. Speak to my heart. That's what we want the Lord to do today. We want him to speak to our hearts. I want to go first to Psalm 197. I'm sorry, Psalm 119 and 97. Psalm 119 and 97. It says, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. That word love is ahab or aheb, and it means to have affection for. The lesson today is about a love for God's word. Hallelujah. Now, some words in, in the Bible are interchangeable, and it is, it is okay. When we hear the word law, automatically we think of restrictions. Uh-oh, the law of God, uh-oh, can't do something. You're not allowed to do this. And when we think of the law of God, when we think of the law of God in those terms, it will cause us to be very tight <laughs> and we'll miss what it is God desires to do through us and to give us. So I want to use, and, and I certainly have the, the uh, latitude to do so, when we think of the law of God, Let's also think of it as the Word of God. The law of God, the Word of God. The Word of God, the law of God. We're going to spend most of today's lesson actually in Psalm 119. Let's go to the purpose of the law or the word of God. Psalm 119 and 105. Listen to what it says. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
If I want to know which direction to follow, which direction to go into, I need the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's, let's quickly, as I say, I'm going to spend most of the time in uh, Psalm. I jump right out of it. Let's go to Proverbs 20, um, and let's go to Proverbs 6 and 23. Listen to what, well, let's start at the 20th verse. My son, keep thy father's commandment, forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk to thee. Lord, have mercy. The law of God the law, the word of God should go with us because thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So it will lead me. When I sleep, I can rest in the solace and the comfort of what the law has said, what his word has said. And when I wake up, It'll talk with me. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Let's watch. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. If we jump down to that 23rd verse, it says in Proverbs 6, 23, for the commandment is a lamp. And the law is light. That's the reason I know I'm right. I'm not, I'm not mixing up or uh, bringing my thought to it. It says the commandment is a lamp. And the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So if the word of God is talking with me, if it is my meditation, notice what he said, oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. So when I'm walking, I'm being led by the word. When I'm sleeping, I'm being kept by the word. When I am awakened, I am in conversation with the word. It is my meditation all the day. The title of this lesson would be, Oh, How or How I Love Thy Law. You have to be able to really have an insatiable desire for the word of God. I love the word of God. How I love thy law. It's not something that I just read occasionally. It's not just a book that sits on my coffee table and gathers dust. People don't have coffee tables any longer. I'm, I'm really dating myself. But it's not something that sits upon my shelf. It is something that I am engaged with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is that important? Let's go to Psalm 119 and 11. Well, I'll start at the ninth verse. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? That is the question. The answer, by taking heed thereto, according to thy word. How do we stop all the nonsense in our community? How do we stop the wayward behavior of our young people? The word of God. 
I don't hear nobody talking to me. The word of God. And, and, and erroneously, we have equated the word of God with church. Well, you can be in church and never hear the word of God. Hallelujah. And that's the problem. All right. How can a young man cleanse his way? Well, he has to take heed. He has to hearken. He has to obey. He has to listen to the word of God. And then he has to have a desire for it. That 10th verse says, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. I want you, I want you to get familiar and I want you to feel comfortable with those words. Law, commandments, statute, word. And I don't want you to constrict when you hear that. I want you to let that word, my soul says yes, flow. Let it let become familiar. Uh, gain a desire a love for the word of God. Don't wander away from the commandment. Don't leave it. Don't get surrounded by your peers and somehow feel like I have to cower from the word. I can't be as spoken as outspoken as I normally am when I'm in a, uh, a situation where a lot of church folk are. No, no, no. When I'm in the marketplace, when I'm in the schoolyard, when I'm on the street, I can't change or wander away from that word which is a light unto my feet. The word will guide you as to what you are to do. The word will guide you as to how you're to perform. Oh yes, it will guide you in every aspect, every facet of your life. There is a word from the Lord. How do I capture it? How do I keep it? Well, that 11th verse tells us, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. The word will not lead you into sin. I'm going to say that again. The word will not lead you into sin. The word, the statutes, the law, the commandments of God do not promote sinful behavior. Hallelujah. If we love the law of God, if we love the word of God, God has made some promises. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Psalm 132. That will be the chapter where we will spend the remaining part of our lesson today. David is our example in this. And this psalm is noted as a song of degrees. In other words, they sang, this is one of the songs that they would sing as they went up to Zion. And as they went up into the temple. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God commanded that the children of Israel would show up at least three times out of the year. And 
and God situated Jerusalem for beauty. <laughs> and he situated it so whether you came from the north, whether you came from the east, whether you came from the, the west, whether you came from the south, you had to go up in order to get to Zion. Everything about the word of God, everything about the law of God, everything about the statutes and the commandments of God are to lift you up. And somehow the PR of the enemy has made us feel like the church, the law, the word is to bring you down. I don't want to hear no religious stuff because it just brings me down. No, the word is to lift you up. It's to build up your character, both morally, spiritually. It builds you up and gives you an inheritance among those that are sanctified. You're to build yourself up upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. The word of God is to lift you up. David loved the word of God. Hallelujah. He loved meditating on the word of God. And whether you know it or not, that is what differenti differentiates and separates a casual Christian from someone that really loves the word of God. When you love the word of God, then you love everything that appertains to it. Well, I, I just like this. You know, I like to study. Well, you can't really study and not worship. You can't really love God and not praise him. Then you can't really worship and live a raggedy life. I don't hear nobody talking to me. See, all of it pertains to to righteousness, and to godliness. And if I'm going to live for God, then it shows in every area of my life. David becomes our object today, the subject of our lesson, in a very different matter. Psalm 132 and 1 says, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. You see, I love God because he's, he's real, all right? He not only promotes those wonderful things that we do, he not only promotes those premium moments when we got everything going, but he's with us when we're in an affliction. The Apostle Paul writes and says uh, in Romans the eighth chapter, likewise, the spirit itself helpeth our infirmities. The Lord is right there, hallelujah, when we're, in a fix. And whether we recognize it or not, glory, I feel the presence of the Lord. That is when we're to pull out the reservoir of word that has been hidden in our heart and use it. The word becomes applicable in an affliction. Not just when you ride in the wave. But when things aren't going the way you want them to go, you can use the word. Hallelujah. 
And that's the reason you ought to be in love with it. What I discovered years ago is that when people uh, backslide, that was a popular term, and it was real. Now you can do whatever and never backslide. I don't, but anyway, that's not my lesson. But when folk would backslide or go back into the world, I looked at it from this perspective. It was because they did not have enough word in them. For if you have enough word in you, then that word will keep you. You never throw up your hands. You never quit. You never walk away. Not when you have enough word, because there's a word for every situation. Well, Pastor Wines, you don't know what I'm going through. It seems like God is against me. It seems like everything I touch is turning to, 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 to just de deflating and, and crumbling right before me. The moment it seems like everything is going well, and then, you know, everything falls, and I'm just... It's just God, and I don't understand why he let this happen. But if you have enough word, then that word will say, well, though he slay me, Lord have mercy, yet will I trust him. If you have enough word, then you can say, many, 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 many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. That is when you have an active, working knowledge of the word of God. So David loved the word. And the song says, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. How he swear unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up, up into my bed. I will not give sleep to mine eyes, nor slumber to mine eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord in habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. David said, hallelujah, that I love God so much. I know I thought I would be able to com complete this in one lesson, but I think I'm going to have to pick this up uh, for next week. David said, I love God so much until it's not about me conquering Goliath, it's not about me sitting finally on the throne of Israel because I recognize the only reason I'm here is because God gave me a word. When I was a teenager, the Lord sent the prophet Samuel to my house, to my father's house. And he told me that I would sit on the throne of God and I would be the captain of the Lord's host. So what you're looking at is the fulfillment of a word on my life. And through all of my teenage years, I had to trust the word. When I was standing before Goliath, I said, sir, you're coming at me with a sword, with a spear. You're coming at me with a resume, but I'm coming at you with a word. I'm coming at you in the name of the Lord. And God is going to give me the victory over you today. And it 
if that wasn't enough, he had to live through all of the years of Saul trying to kill him. He's in the wilderness. He's in the cave of Adullam. And he has to endure from being someone that was revered, respected to someone that is despised. But I can handle it because I got a word. I got a word from the Lord. I can go through whatever I have to go through because I have a word. How can you handle it? They laughing at you. They're ridiculing. Oh, but they don't have the word that I have. They haven't received what I have received. And watch this. It's not just so much the end result of the word as it is the word itself. To have conversation with God and to have God uh, reveal his purpose and his word. I'm, I'm trying to stay focused here. David said, I'm not going to rest. I've achieved uh, the goal. I am sitting on the throne. I am the captain of the Lord's home. It has finally happened. I was a teenager when he spoke, and I'm about 40 years old now, and it's finally happened. Watch this. The first thing David does His first official act as king is to go get the Ark of the Covenant. Now, there used to be a lot of items in the Ark of the Covenant. There was uh, the shoe bread. There was the... Uh, Aaron's rod, which budded. There were several things, but by the time uh, Samuel got it, the only thing that was still in the Ark of the Covenant were the tables or the law. The only thing that was in the Ark was the Word. And David said, we got to go get that. We have to go get the word. That's how much I love it. Now, what is astonishing is that they knew where the ark was. But during the 40 years that Saul was king, the Bible says that Saul never inquired about the ark. He just didn't love it that much. And you have some folk maybe on your roll. <laughs> they'll go to church and they'll be a member for in good standings for years. But they never inquire. Listen, I, I got a tea time. I'm going to the early service and then I'm going to get out and go golfing the rest of the day. They, they, they don't care about Bible study. They don't have time where they get up and take the word of God and set it out there and pray and read the word every day. They don't have, because they just don't love it that much. I don't hear nobody talking to me. They just don't love it that much. But David loved it to the point that that was his first official act. And he said, I'm not going to sleep. You know the story how when he first went to get it, he was so happy and they were bringing the ark back and Uzzah, as the ark was about to tip over, reached out and touched the ark and God smote him and killed him. And it was a breach. And David stopped the procession and went back home and did not understand. I feel like preaching here now. I wish this was a Sunday morning. And uh, he went back home and was disgusted with God. 
and said, God, 40 years. Saul never inquired. He never was concerned about the ark. I find the ark, I put a parade together, and you kill somebody? You know what he did? He got the word. And he started going through the word and discovered his whole program was wrong. That God had set up how the ark was to be handled. And just because he had the position doesn't mean he had the ability to change the word. And so you know what he did? He loved the law. So he changed it and discovered that he was from the tribe of Judah and Judah had no business handling the ark. That was to be handled by the Levitical priesthood. And they were supposed to march so many steps behind the ark and that you didn't touch the ark with your hand but you had to get staves and carry the ark upon your shoulder. So even though he had great intention because he didn't understand the word, he could not progress in what he wanted to do. But that didn't stop him. He got the word. He called in the priests and they said, Dave, this is how it's supposed to be. Oh, Lord, have mercy. How can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? And David sent for the priests and they set it in order. And then David went back out, put it in order, and they were able to bring the Ark of the Covenant back into Zion. And David stayed in his place and worshiped God. He let the Ark go forth. He let the Levites lead. And he came behind there praising God with all of his might, with all of his strength. Because the Ark of the Covenant was now in Zion. It was now in its proper place. He went home and his wife didn't care. She looked at him and said, whoa, didn't we look kingly? Dancing in front of everybody, your handmaids and everybody watching you worship like that, wow. David looked at her and said, honey, if you thought that was bad, wait till tomorrow. He said, because I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth. The only reason I'm sitting on the throne of your father is because of the word of God. And I am not going to allow my position to make me change the reverence and the love that I have for his word. I'm going to stop right there. Would you join me next week? Because we have to see, we have to finish this 132 and we have to see the result. He said, I'm not going to allow my eyes to enjoy sleep until I've done something with this word. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that right now you are touching the hearts of your people, that we would fall in love with your word, not with an idea, but with your word, not with material things, but with your word. Have your way. If you don't know the Lord, you can find him today. Jesus is here. Father, I praise you. 
Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I acknowledge you as my Savior. I believe that God hath raised you from the dead, and I accept you now. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. I give you my life for the rest of my life. Father, I praise you for your word is true. I thank you for what you're doing. Save, heal, and deliver. And let us fall in love with your word. In Jesus' name. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. With Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. If you've given the Lord your life today, then please contact us, email us with your contact information to salvation at perfectingchurch.org. Hallelujah. Well, it's time to sow, and I want everyone to prepare seed today. Prepare your seed. I want everyone that can and will to sow a seed of $30 today. Those of you that are tithing during this service may do so. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We stand amazed at your ability to take so little and to do so much. Bless now, both gift and giver, according to their faithfulness and according to their cheerfulness. For it's not as a debt I owe, but as a seed I sow. God bless you. Stay in the cyber sanctuary as you give and as you hear our announcements. We are blessed to be a blessing. Here are two ways to give. Cash app at dollar sign PC Toledo. Please add your name, address, and type of contribution in the notes. You may mail your contribution to Perfecting Church Toledo, 4609 Glendale Avenue, Toledo, Ohio, 43614. God loves a cheerful giver. We pray Malachi 310 blessings upon you and your household. Thank you for your financial support to Perfecting Church Toledo. Good evening, members and friends of Perfecting Church Toledo. It is time for The Perfecting News. Calling all youth, we have a Bible study just for you. Join the Perfecting Generations Youth and Young Adult Ministry Sundays at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Email pct at att.net for login information. Don't miss this great sharing. Save the date for the 60-plus Lawn Fellowship, Saturday, August 14th at PCT. Bring your chair, lunch, and get ready for a wonderful fellowship. See you on the lawn. Calling all ladies, the PCT's Women's Department is planning a special evening just for you. A dinner fellowship at Kobe Bay Seafood Restaurant. Call the church office to reserve your space. Don't miss this wonderful evening. What have you been believing God for? Bring your prayer request to the PCT prayer call this Saturday. Join with your brothers and sisters and believe God for the impossible. Sunday morning worship at PCT is a powerful time. If you are in the Toledo area, we extend a special invitation for you to join us for in-person worship this Sunday at 8 o'clock a.m. What a time, what a time, what a time. Contact our offices at 419-382-1300 if you require any additional information. Have a blessed week. Thank you so much for your support, PCT. Listen, we have a great day coming up Sunday. 
It will be our fourth year anniversary. Can you believe it? I want everyone to come. 4609 Glendale Avenue, Toledo, Ohio. Our guest speaker is going to be Bishop Derek Hutchins. And our musical guest is going to be none other than Lisa Page Brooks. I want you to join us this Sunday at 8 a.m. for this great celebration. And I know I'm talking to our uh, cyber sanctuary and many of you would want to come but can't. But don't worry, it will be broadcast live. So let's have a wonderful time. I'm asking you to sow a special seed on that day. So I look forward to seeing you this Sunday at 8 a.m. for PCT's fourth church anniversary. God bless you. Yeah. Uh -huh. 